this is our tasting room here at Cismontane Brewing Company. Um, we're just a local microbrewery here in South Orange County, producing some fine ales and, and lagers for our friends out there in the world. Um, this uh, We've been open about a year and three months, so we just had our first year anniversary. Okay, and why did you guys decide to get into this? Well, you know, I've done a lot of different things over the years, and um, through the through the various experiences, I've found that doing something that has uh, some substance to it that allows me to have a little bit more connection with the end product was something that I always enjoyed about the various things I've done. Um, you know, I had a had an heirloom tomato farm, and there was something to that farming process and packaging the goods and bringing them to market and meeting the different buyers that, that you don't get without doing some kind of food product or some kind of perishable or, or you know, um, craft quality product. There's something to that that you just don't get doing a lot of things. Uh, so I always wanted to do something like that. And, um, you know, being into the food and beverage world, you know, a bit of a foodie, I guess. Uh, beer has always been something that's been really important to me, um, something that, that, I, that I enjoy, brewing is something that I enjoy, and the opportunity presented itself to do this, so we just, we just went for it. Okay, now Cismontane, where did you get that name from? Cismontane is the term for coastal Southern California. What we're doing with beers has a lot more diversity. Beer has so much more flavor, um, from light to dark to hoppy to, to not hoppy to fruit infused to you know, estuary with yeast. There's so many different characters you can get out of a beer. It gives you a lot of opportunity to pair with food. And brewing is very much science. Uh, part of what I like about it though is that it's also an art form. You're creating something unique. Uh, you have the opportunity to create something unique if you so choose to. Um, and it, it really taps into that creative process. And then of course there's the social aspect and the food aspect and uh, there's a lot of enjoyment that goes along with creating beers and drinking beers and being part of the brewing community. Okay, right now we're in your tasting room. Mm -hmm. By making a tasting room, what did you want to bring to the community? Well, the tasting room is a, is a place where people can come in and try the various experiments and beers that we, we create. Uh, a lot of the things you can get in the tasting room you'll never see in a bar. Uh, they're one-offs or you know little tweaks of this or that. So we try to have anywhere from five, four to six beers on at any point in time. And um, that could be our standard beers. We try to keep those around for people, especially the Coulter IPA, the Black Stone Imperial Stout and the Citizen, which is our California Common. Um, but then we'll do variations and, and one-off releases. We try to do a specialty beer once a month, and, uh, and then, you know, of course, these little batch things that you're not gonna see anywhere else. Okay. You wanna try some beers? Let's do some tasting. Let's get hammered. This is the Heifer Bison. It's, uh, this is our oat half, and um, it's got a little bit of caramelness, a little bit of oatiness. It's about 4.75% ABV, so it's very light and refreshing. Got some nice character to it. You might even get a little clove on the nose. A little clove, a little, mm -hmm. little bit of banana. I think we did pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, are those Whoa. typical flavors that are in a half white? That'll get you. Um, Clove, those are banana. typical flavors. Yeah, that flavor comes from the yeast, actually. So those phenolic characters are generated during fermentation by the yeast. There you go. And yeah, that's very typical. They're typically quite cloudy, um, lighter in color, and you know, a very, very easy drinking beer very well designed for food, brats, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Most German beers are, are very well designed for food. And this one right here that you just served me, what is this one? That's a California Common. It's a steam beer. It's one of the unique beer styles to California. It came around in the early 1800s. It was basically brewed due to necessity. They couldn't get refrigeration. There's no refrigeration then. So they had to warm ferment lagers. All the, most of the brewers were German, mm -hmm. so they used lager yeast. 
Um, lager yeast likes to be fermented at cooler temperatures, ales at warmer temperatures. Uh, without that control, they were fermenting them at ale temperature. And the malts were a little darker because you know, coming, from, um, coming from the plains, the light colored malts would rot. There was too much residual water, so they would toast them a little darker so the malt could make the trip. So you get these kind of amber lagers, if you will. And flavors I'm looking for. Flavors you're looking for in a beer like that would be a little bit of mild hoppiness on the nose, very subtle. Um, you'd find a little bit of bitterness in the finish. It's going to be similar to a traditional pale ale in terms of the hoppiness and malt character, but you'll get that clean lager finish. Now I could try, I could taste a big difference in these two. This one seems yeah. to be a lot more crisp, a lot more lighter. Mm -hmm. And like you said, this one right here, I do taste the hops and that more bitter taste. It's got a little bit more of a bitter finish. Um, but it's still smooth. It's still smooth, nice and clean beer. Uh, if you want something that's got even more kick, we got the Coulter IPA. And let me, still a little furry here, there you go. This is a, it's kind of a West Coast style IPA. Um, but what we wanted to do is make it a little bit more balanced than what you get traditionally from a West Coast IPA. Uh, it's got a little bit more malt on the back end. We use a little bit of rye to give it a little bit of head retention and a little bit more character. And we ferment at a slightly higher temperature so you get a little bit more um, character out of the yeast. So it's got a little more balance in terms of all the different flavors of the beer spectrum, if okay. there is such a thing. Yeah. Now, is there anything I'm looking for when I try this? Deliciousness. Deliciousness, okay. Fruitier smell. Yeah, much fruitier smell. That's from both the hops and the yeast. Fruitier taste. Fruitier taste, that's right. That also, also from the hops and the yeast. So there's uh, the, we were trying to balance out that, that really piney, citrusy hop flavor with what you get at a slightly higher fermentation temperature, a little bit of that rose character, you almost smell floral, um, mango, stuff like that. Um, you also get that in the flavor, and then it has a little bit of bitter, bitter punch, but we've balanced that out with a little bit of malt on the back end. So it finishes at a slightly higher gravity, and it has a little bit more malt body. When you are doing tastings here, you, you start off from light to darkest. That's correct. Um, well, you know, I would say that you start from what's gonna do the, less, the least amount of damage to your palate, and you work your way up to what's gonna do the most damage, so. so. See, I personally tend to steer clear of darker beers just because mm -hmm. I assume that they're gonna be stronger, right. and more bold in taste. Mm -hmm. But that tends to be true, but it's not always the case. Okay. Uh, with our with our imperial stout, I think you'll find that it is um, quite a bit darker and quite a bit bolder in taste. But you do like coffee, right? I love coffee. And you like chocolate, right? I love chocolate. And you like beer, right? I like beer. Well, then there's <laughs> no reason that you won't like that because you will get all of those delicious flavors in that okay. beer. Coffee, And you can't chocolate. see through that at all. No, that's <laughs> that's about as dark as they get. Okay. Oh, I smell it. It smells like cocoa. That's right. Imagine that with a little scoop of vanilla ice cream. Pralines and cream, maybe some chocolate And it torque. leaves like a, a mustache. There you go. <laughs> it's actually pouring quite nice. That's really smooth. You like that? But I think out of all of them, which I would never go towards a dark beer, mm -hmm. out of all of the ones I've tried so far, I think I would I would definitely go yep. with that. I am not surprised. And this is called That's Blackstone. Blackstone. Mm -hmm. It's I'm named a big after fan. This is named after Black Speech. This is named yeah. after Coulter, the big cone pine. The citizen is our is our California common. Uh, just named after the citizens of Cismontane, California, and then El Toro Trio, of course, is named after the, the all the threes and El Toro. This one's really nice. I like this one. Thanks. Now, which one do people tend to go with? It just depends on the palate, what you're looking you for. You know, people like them all. Um, I think that these three are these are our three standard beers, and they all meet a very different audience. Um, you have people that like dark beer, or people that don't think they like beer, but usually like dark beer. 
Okay. It's kind of, this is kind of like, believe it or not, the biggest, darkest beer tends to be entry level for a lot of people. Really? Because they they like red wine. You can always say, oh, you like red wine, right? Oh, right. you like chocolate, right? Oh, well, you will like this because okay. it's big, it's bold, it's got a lot of flavor. But yeah, they all, they all serve a different audience. Okay. Uh, the difference between us and a bar is people are coming here for the experience of trying our beers and getting to know a little bit more about what we do. It's not, it's not a place where people stay until the wee hours of the morning and it's more about the experience of the food product, which is beer, as opposed to going out and getting a couple of drinks and partying with your friends. You know, it's, it's just not as populated down here as it is in North Orange County. So, you know, things are few and far between, but if you go and find them, you'll do quite well. Um, you know, there's always something new. So hopefully there will be more and more uh, to, to meet the demand, because the demand is here. And, you know, it's just, it's just gonna take time before things change. Okay, now if someone were to come in and do a tasting here, do you offer what you're doing for me right now? Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk to people about beer. Tell them we go blue in the face. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're here, right? Well, tasting room is about education. It's about trying stuff. It's about experience. And you know, when people come in and have questions about beers, we answer them. Yeah, so yeah, we do this all the time. Besides your beer, what do you offer here at the tasting room? Well, we offer friendship. Friendship. <laughs> <And> good times. <laughs> um, well, you know, people can come in. Generally, we. We try to have, uh, if you look around on the walls, we always have a different artist. We do, we try to do an art show once a month. We try to change the art once a month. It's a good venue for people to come in and show their stuff. We do everything from, you know, fine arts to just uh, local hobbyists that do photography or painting or whatever. Uh, just a way to reach out into the community and, and get some nice stuff on the walls. So that's one thing you can do here. We also offer some, some wines and stuff from friends of mine from around California, very boutique stuff that you're not gonna find anywhere else. These are very short runs, maybe 300 cases of this and maybe 1,000 cases of this at the most. And we'll get a couple and throw that on, on the wall as well. So those are a few of the things. Of course, we have games and stuff for people to come and play and books to read and whatever else you wanna do. And free Wi-Fi. And free Wi-Fi, great. Everyone can get on their iPhones. <laughs> they sure do. You better okay. believe it. Have a beer and watch some videos and make some bad jokes. And what days are your tasting rooms open? Uh, the tasting room is open Thursday through Sunday. Uh, it's kind of a quiet neighborhood, so we tend to close a little bit early. You know, come on by and get a beer. <laughs>